Great harm has been done to us. We have suffered great loss. And in our grief and anger, we have found our mission and our moment. On basic questions uh, about American exceptionalism, uh, the Republicans are united and the Democrats are divided. And I'm talking now about the politicians and about the voters of both parties. American exceptionalism. That's the idea that this country is special and unique. A shining city on a hill, as Ronald Reagan used to refer to it. A country that uh, is there, as John Winthrop, the Puritan, thought to show an example to the rest of the world. And certainly, great American political leaders of both political parties have been American exceptionalists. Uh, Abraham Lincoln called America the last best hope on earth. Uh, Theodore Roosevelt, a Republican, Franklin Roosevelt, a Democrat, they were both united in a belief in American exceptionalism. Uh, President Eisenhower, President Kennedy, definitely believers in American exceptionalism. America's purpose is more than to follow a process. It is to achieve a result, the end of terrible threats to the civilized world. If we wait for threats to fully materialize, we will have waited too long. I will never hesitate to use force when it is required. Any attack will be met with a swift and a certain response. The Kerry Doctrine, to the extent there is one, is a doctrine that says we'll respond to any attacks. And in other words, what it really comes down to is this. Uh, the president, and oddly enough, uh, uh, Hillary Clinton and, and, and some other Democratic senators believe that uh, terrorists must be preempted on their home grounds. They must be stopped, they must be attacked before they attack us. John Kerry rejects preemption and believes that we can deal with terrorists uh, through intelligence and law enforcement and, uh, and really shouldn't uh, uh, be so aggressive in going after them and basically will respond when they attack. Western civilization has faced this crisis before. Winston Churchill wrote about World War II and he called it the unnecessary war, the unnecessary war, because he pointed out how easy it would have been, relatively easy, to have stopped Hitler and stopped Tojo early on. But instead, we, the West, uh, each in our own ways, Americans by being isolationists, British by being uh, appeasement oriented, the French by just hiding their heads in the sand, uh, we let these totalitarians uh, grow stronger, win victories, gobble up little countries, and in the end, we suddenly had to really fight for our lives with our backs against the wall, against this mighty evil power. And the lesson, of course, was never again to let a situation reach that point. The next 9-11 could be with nuclear weapons or anthrax or who knows what. And that's why I think you have to have a policy to preempt the enemy where he is and before he attacks. I will never hesitate to use force if necessary to repel any attack to protect our country. That is a but deep division between understand. the Republican and Democratic approach, between the Bush approach, which is to be unilateral if necessary, and preemptive if necessary in a world of post 9-11. By joining the community of nations, we will go back to the United Nations and we will turn over a new chapter in America's relationship with the world. I believe we deserve a president of the United States who understands that working with the international community, that multilateralism and patience are strength, not weaknesses. The Kerry campaign wants you to think that it is a matter of personalities. When you make it a matter of personalities, I think you completely misread what the differences are between America and France and others on issues like Iraq and the war on terror. We have a real existential enemy who wants to kill us and destroy our way of life, and we do not have a lot of allies who are with us to the death, thick or thin, in this struggle. The British are one, the Australians are another, and a very few others. And the question is, how do you proceed? And the Bush innovation was to say, A, we proceed on our own and with the coalition of the willing, if necessary, and B, we are prepared to preemptively attack our enemy before he attacks us. We're paying a terrible price for it now, but I think that it's a short-term, short-run, uh, smaller price than we would have paid uh, in comparison to what would have happened if we'd not taken that action that we took. We must choose between a world of fear and a world of progress. 
we must stand up for our security and for the permanent rights and the hopes of mankind by heritage and by choice the United States of America will make that stand and delegates to the United Nations you have the power to make that stand as well they see us acting in the world the way that the French and the Europeans do as arrogant unilateral a cowboy and that's how they look at this uh, usurper president when in fact I believe He's acting in our interest in a way that's absolutely necessary in conditions thrust upon us as a result of 9-11.